Gaspard. Gaspard. Absolutely. Almost as French as Gaston. Oh, it's fabulous, isn't it? I love all that sort of thing. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Why is it? It just sounds so exotic and lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Gaspard. We're not quite so exotic in England, are we? St George's Day, it sort of yeah. sounds a bit dull, but he isn't dull, no. St George. No. I mean, it's obviously a, it's a day where we celebrate being English and everything St George stood for, but most of us don't know what St George stood for because we don't really know very much about him. No, it's just not a day that we celebrate enough. So w what is St George's Day? Who was he? What does it mean for us in 2022? Let's talk to historian and commentator David Allroyd bolt Good to see you this morning. Hello. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks. Why, sh why should we celebrate St George's Day? Well, I think the first reason uh, is that St. George was an historically quite important figure. The reason he is a saint uh, is that he was a bodyguard to the Emperor Diocletian uh, at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth century. Uh, as we all know, and as people on the left who don't like St. George point out, yes, he was born in Turkey, but fine, it was the Roman Empire. Mm. Uh, and he was a Christian at a time when Diocletian was persecuting Christians extremely severely. He refused to give up his religion. He refused uh, to become an apostate. And so he was beheaded for it. And what most people forget is that his wife was also executed for her religion. And it was quite quick that St. George became a, 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 a saint, uh, became a martyr. He's one of uh, what the uh, 14 mega uh, martyrs, as they're known in the church, one of the 14 really important early martyrs to the church. Uh, and his uh, cult of sainthood uh, quickly expanded. Uh, he's important for this country because in the 14th century, one of our great kings, Edward III, decided that he would take St. George and use him and use the badge uh, as the emblem of the new Order of the Garter in 1348, ah. which was Which quickly... is where he gets that sort of sword and that, the, I don't know, the sort of medieval yeah, knight look. Exactly. And it's, it quickly became the premier order of chivalry throughout Europe. I mean, at the very time, this was an order of chivalry that knights and princes all around Europe wanted to belong to because it was recognised as being the most exclusive and the most chivalrous. And, you know, St. George's Day was celebrated really on a par with Christmas at this period and right through uh, pretty much until the Act of Union in 1707. And I think one of the reasons it's fallen off in practice over the past 300 years is because it was felt after the Act of Union that, well, look, we're all a united kingdom now. This is Great Britain. And to elevate uh, England above Scotland would not be politically sensible. But look, we've had now 25 years of devolution and of encouraging St. Andrew's Day, of encouraging St. Patrick's Day, St. David's Day. Well, I was going to say, they never, they never yeah. dropped off, did no, exactly. they, popularity? And it seems a bit odd that one part of the constituents, uh, the four constituents of the United Kingdom should feel some kind of embarrassment about celebrating its patron saint's day, its national day. I think there's perhaps a, a rather residual idea that it's somehow xenophobic or racist because of a few idiotic uh, football fans in the 90s who used to go around and <clears> try and you know, beat up fo uh, foreign football fans while wrapped in the flag. Mm. But you don't allow one deviation to ruin an entire no, symbol. No, that's thought. right. I don't know why we gave into that at all. Well, it was politically expedient at the time for Tony Blair because he was devolving everything and wanted to say, look, you know, we're, we're all good people here. And uh, I think it's about time we reclaim that. You've mm. still got people like Emily Thornberry, of course, who will go campaigning and point at it and sneer on Twitter, but oh, they've yes. got to be a minority now. Yeah, well, you would hope so, wouldn't you? Because it's, it, it seems strange that we don't take pride in something which is quintessentially English. Mm. Well, I think, yeah, pride perhaps, but why aren't we just comfortable with saying, this is our patron saint's mm. day, we are English, let's celebrate it. It doesn't have to be some kind of grand nationalistic gesture. It's just a lovely day that we could all come together and feel some enjoyment in celebrating Englishes. And it should be, I think, that all parts of the United Kingdom celebrate each other's days as a way well, of yes, feeling I mean, more united. We've yeah. had loads of views from people, I mean, particularly we Wales St. and Scotland. Day in our household. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, come on, try and walk through London on St. Patrick's yeah, Day exactly. without seeing a shamrock, without seeing pints of Guinness and without seeing uh, the rivers flowing green, as it were. Mm. What would be our emblems then? I mean, obviously there's the, the flag, mm. but you, you just mentioned the shamrock and things like that from yeah. St. Patrick's. Is there anything else that we would have emblazoned on our mugs or hold or put in our or buttonholes. Well, I think you take the badge of the Order of the Garter with its, uh, with, the, with its motto, Oni Soaki Mali Pons, mm. shame on him who thinks evil of it, which I think is which a rather good way lovely, of uh, yes. looking at St. George's Day. Because how can you think evil of something so great as his sacrifice for his faith on the one hand, and of what he has meant throughout English history? I mean, St. George's Day became what they call a double major. That is uh, a feast day on which all work stopped. You had to go to church and then had to feast. That happened after the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. 
It was. I mean, uh, look at the history of that. Then. That's brilliant. Yeah. And this, and you know, Shakespeare has Henry V mm. going to battle. Cry uh, God for Harry England and St George. Yes, uh, yes. It's a, it's a historically that, very you? important thing. Um, and I think, you know, come on. Do so we need a bank holiday? Basically, we need to... a bank holiday. Yeah. I think so. And it was perhaps the only decent policy of Jeremy Corbyn's in 2017 and 2019 uh, that in his manifesto he said he was going to make St George's Day a bank holiday. Did he? Yeah. Well, we must be quite shy of it for that reason, that. reason, must we? Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, lovely. Well, that's really interesting. David Allroyd Bolt, really good to talk to yeah, you. Thank amazing. you very much indeed. There's, those are you things yes. you absolutely forget. Yes, uh, the, the Henry V went into battle crying for, for England and St George.